Hello, I'm Frank Force, and this video is going to give you a little bit of a basic introduction on how to use the Wildflower system. When you first load Wildflower, you will see a window similar to this one. Wildflower uses the mouse to control. If you accidentally press the left mouse button to draw, that's okay. Wildflower supports uh, undo, so you can just press Control Z to undo all those changes. If you make multiple mistakes, you just press, keep pressing Control Z to undo your changes. You can use the middle mouse button to move the camera around and the middle mouse wheel to zoom. If you don't have a mouse wheel, you can hold Tab and press the left mouse button to move and the right mouse button to zoom. Before we get into editing, let's take a look at the menu bar along the bottom row of the editor window. The first button, called Simulator Test, compiles and runs your game in the simulator. I recommend you try this out before you do anything else and play around in this example game. In the example game you can use the right mouse button to tilt cubes which allows you to move by tilting left and right and jump by tilting up. And you can also jump on an angle by tilting on an angle. You can press the left mouse button to move cubes, like so. Or, while pressing the left mouse button, you can press the right mouse button to pick cubes up off the table and move them above other cubes. This allows you to play with the cubes more like you would as if they were on an actual table, without them colliding with each other. And you can cover a lot of ground at this rate. As you progress the level, it will appear on the map screen new rooms that you discover. And as you come across signs and NPCs in the world, that text is displayed to the map screen as well. So I keep adventuring here. Now, you will need to remember to hold the left mouse button and then press the right mouse button to pick the cubes up off the table. If any time you start to tilt the cubes and end up with the player upside down, that happens. But don't worry, you can just press the left mouse button and straighten things out again. It's no big problem. Let's keep hitting left. That's a save point. As you hit save points, whenever you die, it's going to Oh, you stay there. Hopefully I won't die here. Okay, I'm going to keep hitting left. Here's a baddie. Okay, I made it past them. This is a ball power up here. When you get the ball power up, you can tap the screen with the middle mouse button or control click it, which is touching the screen in Siftio to roll. Now, if you're on an actual Siftio device, you double tap to turn into a ball and single tap to jump. But the controls are a little bit different on the Siftulator. Let's jump in this warp zone here. This is going to take us back to where we started. Uh, another thing I'd like to show you really quick is the map is the pause menu on the map screen, which you can access by touching the map screen. Again, this is the same way you turn into a ball is by pressing the middle mouse button. And that pauses gameplay and opens up the map screen. You can do that any time, and it's pretty quick. It shows you a little bit of information about where you are, and also shows you your current goal, which in this case, we're going for the waterproof power-up in the East Cave. You can tilt the map cube to access more options. For example, we can view the full map and scroll through all the areas we have revealed so far, like so. We can turn on audio options, like change the music to be on. And then we can just return back to the game. And now we have music. Uh, this, this game here has a lot of little fun things for you to play around with and ideas for you to get inspired by and uses some of the different objects of Wildflower 
to show how we could make a huge world with this system. So anyway, that's the basics of how to use the wildflower and play in the wildflower game using the right mouse to tilt and the left and the right mouse to pick cubes up over top of each other using the middle mouse button to turn to a ball and touch the pause menu. And whenever you're ready, you can just press escape to exit out of that and it will bring you right back into the editor. Now when you're in the editor, you can control where the player starts by pressing the M button. That, as you can see, moves the player. Let's move the player to start in a different place. How about right here? On these coins here. Or in the air here. And then the player will start there. When you press the simulator test button, it's going to load up the game again. And here we are. Another way to move around the player is by simply pressing the space bar. Let's give that a try. So you can just move anywhere you want to go, press the space bar, and it will, when you press the space bar to move the player, it's a shortcut that also runs the game at the same time. So that's going to move the player to that new spot we just picked and run the game. Uh, along the bottom row, there's a few other buttons. If you have a Siftio, Siftio cubes, you can press the Siftio install button, and that will build and install four Siftio cubes. If you auto save button, the auto save button is enabled by default, which will save, resave the file whenever the game is run or the program is exited to prevent you from losing any lost information. You can disable that by clicking the button, but I recommend keeping autosave on. You can use the save and load buttons if you want to save your 2D key file to a different file name. Your 2D key file contains all the information about your level, data, terrain, it stands for 2D terrain, which is the level data, tiles, and objects. Save minimap is a button that when you click on it takes a few seconds to generate all the minimap information for the game. And you only want to click that button when you make large changes to your level and want to finalize those changes into the minimap. The show settings button opens up another window within the wildflower editor where you can toggle what abilities the player starts with using the left mouse button. And you can also change if it begins with sound and music, or if the map starts revealed. And when you're done changing the settings, you can just click the Hide Settings button. The Help button is the last button on the menu by row. When you click that, it will launch the Offline Help, which gives you a little bit of information about Wildflower. But the best place to go for Wildflower Help is the Wildflower Wiki that contains more in-depth information. There are a few other parts to the Wildflower Editor. The Quick Pick box, located in the lower right corner of the screen, allows you to change what the current draw tile is. You can hold down the right mouse button while moving around to drag the current selection. It shows you some information up top about whether it's solid or non-solid, or if it has any special attributes. These arrow buttons change between the different tile sets. Only the tile set 0 is used by the example project. The other tile sets are completely blank and ready to be filled in with your own art. Another way to change what the current tile is is to just hold down control and click anywhere on the screen. But we'll get to that in the next video. In the upper right hand corner of the screen are the layer buttons that allow you to change the current editable layer. Wildflower has three layers, background, foreground, and objects.
For beginners, it's recommended you stick with background or foreground layers. The tab on the right hand side of the screen can be moused over to open up a window that will automatically open up whenever you save the game or use any of the main functions of Wildflower, like running the simulator test or install. That shows you some information about the whether what file it's saved to you, how many coins there are, and if there are any errors in your world, those will also show up here. These numbers in the upper left hand corner of the screen are the position of the mouse cursor in Siptio space, but you don't really need to worry about that right now. So to recap what we learned in this video, you can use the middle mouse button to move around the screen. You can use the mouse wheel to zoom. And press M to move where the player is going to start. The Siftulator test button builds and runs your game. Quick pick box is used to change the current draw tile. You can also hold down control while clicking on tiles in the world. The number buttons can change the current layer or just press the numbers on your keyboard. There's a message window on the right hand side that can slide open. And that's the basics of Wildflower. In the next video, we're going to learn how to edit tiles, make changes to your world. Thanks for watching.